Welcome back to Colorado Sports Connection. We're talking with Jerry Schemmel. Jerry, let's change gears a little bit. Now, we talked a little bit about LaFonso being, you know, being a great man. But I've got to say, you know, the same goes to you as well. And uh, you've always been courteous to everyone around you. And one of the things that I'd like the audience to know, too, is that you wrote a book, Chosen to Live. For those out there that don't know the story, would you mind talking about that a little no, bit? No, not at all. And thank you, by the way, for the very kind words. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I wrote a book, came out in 1996 from a plane crash that I survived in 1989. Uh, a flight that originated here in Denver, United Airlines Flight 232, ended up crashing in Sioux City, Iowa. They killed 112 people, including uh, my travel companion boss at that at that time. And, and I wrote a book about it, and the reason for the title, Chosen to Live, was because I, I feel like I was in a group of people that, that all died in the crash. Everybody around me in this circle died, and I'm in the middle of this group, and, and I came out without any serious injuries. And it didn't make sense why I, I, at least to me, why I survived, all these people did not, including a little boy sitting in front of me. And I just came to the conclusion that, that for some reason, and I don't know what it is, I still don't know, Daryl, 22 years later, I was, I was picked to live. I, I believe God chose me to live a little bit longer. I'm not sure how much. I'm not sure why that happened. But I think I need to spend the rest of my life trying to figure out why and, and, and come to that calling. And so that's the, the motivation behind writing the book and, and the reason for the title. You know, what I've also found out too is that people have contacted you uh, up some, sometimes about their experience, uh, like the Columbine experience that happened mm -hmm. here in Colorado, uh, other survivors. Talk a little bit about that for us, if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I think it's, to me, Daryl, one of the reasons I, I did survive the thing is so that I can take this experience, this story, and maybe have some positive influence on somebody else. Uh, I just got a, an email from a woman who survived the, the, the uh, landing on the Hudson River that everybody survived and the boats came and we, we all know about that and she's having trouble dealing with the post-trauma stress and so uh, I was able to kind of share my experience with her and what happened not necessarily my crash but what happened after that which I think is a lot more important so yeah there are a lot of people over the years various events not just plane crashes but like you said the Columbine disaster who have called who have contacted me and and thinking maybe there's some way he can use experience to help me and and that's rewarding for me that I think that's one of the reasons like I said I survived the crash and one of the things that I really have to admire you about is that You've, you've faced you know, all situations and by no means are you afraid to tell anyone this is what I went through at, at all. Yeah, and I just think if, if you're gonna go through something like that, a traumatic event in your lives, and, and, and so many people have done that. And my wife makes a good point. Everybody has their own plane crash. Some are very serious, some are not real serious, but everybody has their own plane crash. I think you have to deal with it head on. I don't think you can, you can put it away and stick it in your pocket and forget about it. It doesn't work that way. I survived the plane crash when 112 people died. I, I can't get around that. It's not going to go away. So for me, I'm just going to I'm going to face it head on. And and for me, that means speaking about it, revisiting whenever I whenever I need to, and using that experience to try to help other people. Well, you know, one, I, I have to say thank you, especially for all the people out there that you uh, definitely help as well, because I know some people shy away from that. They don't feel that uh, uh, that's, you know, that's their need to help, but you've taken that role, and I, I applaud you for that. Well, I appreciate um, that, Daryl. One, one of the things I like to do before we go is uh, I put your partner, Jack Corgan, on the spot. Uh, a couple months ago uh -oh. and uh, so we like to do the same thing and and my uh, partner over there trade knows where I'm going with this uh -oh. is that I never got to be a major league baseball player so it would be an honor for me if I could have a major league announcer do a baseball situation where I drive in the winning run in the bottom of the ninth <laughs> inning as we defeat you know the San Francisco Giants uh, all right. you know uh, All right. And one of the guys, uh, I'll set up the scene for you. Base is loaded. All right. And with Jack, I was facing Nolan Ryan. Oh. Okay. But let's say this time, I'm going to face Steve Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pitching for the Phillies then, I assume? Steve yeah. Carlton? Yes. All right. We're facing the Phillies then? Yes. All right. Well, you did put him on the spot. I'll see what. Uh, Jack's very good on, on he, his feet, I, I put so him I'll on see the if spot. I, can, uh, I can come close to that. 
All right, base is loaded, two outs for the Rockies, bottom of the ninth inning. Steve Carlton, who's allowed just three hits so far in the ball game on the mound, he's throwing smoke. Now keep this in mind, folks. Daryl Navarro was 0 for his last 54 at the plate. I'm not even sure why he's hitting here and he's such a terrible slump. Hey, he's in the bases loaded. He's going to work from the windup here. And here's the pitch to Navarro. Swing a long fly ball, deep left field. It could be out of here. It is gone. Grand slam. Daryl Navarro wins it for the Rockies. It's over, folks. Start your engines and get back home. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's why he's the best. Colorado Rockies play-by-play uh, -play radio announcer Jerry Schemmel. <laughs> right. And... That's the only time I'll ever get a hit. And by the way, you were accurate. I probably was 0 for 54. I had to throw that in, sorry. No, that, that was the truth. Jerry, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, looking forward to hearing you on the radio for the 2011 season. And hopefully, we can hear you call the World Series right here in Denver, Colorado. Yeah, that'd be great. Carol, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, truly a great man, Jerry Schemmel. When we come back, we'll talk with the 5A State Girls Swimming Champions from Regis Jesuit High School right here on Colorado Sports Connection.